Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Good morning, everybody. My name's Corey. I'm here to sing with you all and worship our faithful God. Let's sing together. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with only thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. We sing it out. This is amazing grace. This is unveiling love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. your life, that I would be set free, and oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me, sing it out, who brings, who brings our chaos back into order, who makes the orphan the son and daughter, the king of glory, the king of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, just like the sun in all of its brilliance, the king of glory, the king of all kings. This is amazing grace. This is a day. That you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you lay down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. We get the opportunity now to sing in the song. We'll be singing for all of eternity that there is a worthy land slain for our sin. Let's all sing this together. For worthy is the Lamb who was slain, and worthy is the King Worthy is the Oh, worthy is the Lamb who was slain, oh yes he is. Worthy is the King who conquered the truth. Oh, worthy is the Lamb who was slain, worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unveiling love that you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set free. And oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. We sing it again. Sing worthy. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Amen. You are good, you are good when there's 
there's nothing good in me you are love you are love on display for all to see you are light you are light when the darkness closes in you are hope you are hope you have covered all my sin yeah. sing it out you are peace you are peace you are peace when my fear lift your voices you are true you are true even in my wandering you are joy you are joy you're the reason that i sing you are life you are life in you death has lost its sting and no i'm running to your arms i'm running to your arms the riches of your love will always be enough nothing compares to your embrace light of the world forever and we sing you are more sing it out you are more you are more than my words will ever say you are lord you are lord all creation will proclaim you are here you are here in your presence i may hold you are god you are god of all else i'm letting go Whoa, and though i'm running to your arms i'm running to your arms the riches of your love will always be enough nothing compares to your embrace so light of the world forever my heart will sing no other name jesus Jesus, my heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing. Sing it out. No other name. Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing no other name. I'm running to your eyes, I'm running to your eyes, the riches of your love will always be enough, nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever. And my heart will sing. No other name, Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing. Lift your voices. No other name, Jesus, oh, Jesus.
proclaim your word, Lord God. Oh, so we invite you here, and we can feel your presence. And we're so excited that you're here with us, that you inhabit the praises of your people. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So, Holy Spirit, we sing to you, and we invite you here. Let's sing it to a church. Oh, Holy Spirit. stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's worth that will bless your heart and I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you are looking into my heart sing it out because i'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless work, let's sing it loud. King of endless words, that no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required. Oh, you search deeper, you search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. And I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Where it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. And I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made. When it's all about you, it's all about you. And I'm coming back, and I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. And I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. Sing it again. I'm coming back. Sing it loud. And I'm coming back to you. And 
expectation. We sing it out. And I'm sorry. It's all about you. And we sing that it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Amen. Take your seats. Take your seats. It's all about Jesus, isn't it? It's not about you. It's about him. Hallelujah. Thank this young man right here, Corey Senator, filling in for our praise and worship leader, Ronnie. He's out of state at his brother's graduation, and I just pray for his traveling mercies as well, that he's having a wonderful time with his family there and back with us. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Cause Jesus made it all, all to him I owe. My sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone. Can change the leper spots and melt this heart of stone. For Jesus made it all, all to him I owe. My sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat that Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. My sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. For my sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. And he washed it white as snow. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. So, oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up 
from the dead Cause Jesus made it all All to him I owe My sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow Yes, my sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow Amen. Praise God. You know, God is good. He's good all the time. Oh, and even when we don't quite understand the circumstances. Now, I have a message I want to get into in just a minute that really blessed this morning in a powerful, powerful way. I believe it's meant to be for an encouragement, like all messages should be. The Bible says that the Word of God is for our learning and for our encouragement. And I pray it indeed will encourage you like it did to the group this morning. Um, but I, I feel strong. Kyle, I need you up here, please. I, I feel strong about, about this, what we're going to do right now. And uh, I, I know when you come to church, we sing, then you hear a message. I understand that. But this is not like other churches, in my opinion. So um, we want to do what uh, we believe the Lord and the Holy Spirit wants us to do. We have someone here that is in, that it, uh, has a family member that is dying of cancer. And I want to pray for this woman. It's uh, a family that's very dear to my heart for many, many, many years. Uh, they've been with me since the beginning. And that was, what, eight, 20 years ago, Kyle? Kyle has as well. 20 years ago, and so has Pastor Angie and Pastor Don. That's how long uh, we've been together ministering for the Lord, seeing mighty things happen. And here's a dear family, the Rivera family, that I love dearly. And when she cries, it's like one of my girls cries. puts me in a different place. So, Lacey, why don't you come on up if you don't mind? It's Lacey's sister, Lisa. I went to see her in the hospital. Kyle, I went to see her in the hospital. And um, she was reluctant to, I'm just going to be honest, she was reluctant to receive the Lord, even with this diagnosis of fourth stage cancer that possibly could be spreading. She's in Phoenix getting radiation, and Lacey just told me she'll have radiation for her brain, for preventative measures, and it's just not looking in the natural, looking very good. I'm concerned for her soul, as well as Lacey and her family many of us were concerned. Pastor Don, why don't you join us up here as well? And is Pastor Angie here? Pastor Angie, if you could come as well. I know you were next door helping out. I didn't know whether you came back in or not. We love you, first of all. And uh, it's a terrible thing to have a family member like that. Now, if they're Christian, that's, that's a good thing, don't you think? Because to be absent from the body is to be present with Christ. Still, it's, it, it hurts to see a family member like this. But God told me that she is coming into the kingdom. And uh, when I came up here, Lacey, he's, she's coming into the kingdom. And that I was to anoint a handkerchief for you to give and lay on her and pray. And when you do that, you ask her, uh, how, uh, how goes your soul? And I believe you're going to lead your sister to the Lord. I don't know when you're going to go see her again. I know she's in Phoenix, but I'm sure you will see her sometime in the near future because of your concern. And, and I think that is how 
this miracle is going to come forth. So we want to anoint a handkerchief, Kyle, and Pastor Angie and Pastor Don. I have it right here. Here's the oil, saturated. According to Acts 19, it says, and you can look it up when you get home if you think this is some kind of <laughs> tomfoolery or something. Uh, it says in Acts 19 that from the body of Paul came anointed handkerchiefs. That wherever the people laid these handkerchiefs, they were healed. Devils were cast out. I believe God is not a respecter of persons. So we're going to pray and anoint this handkerchief for healing and for her soul. And I want you to pray with me. Will you pray with me? Okay, let's anoint it, lay hands on it. Father, in Jesus' name, according to Acts 19, we lay hands on this handkerchief. And collectively, we release an anointing into this handkerchief for healing, deliverance, and salvation. I pray as Lacey, with fear and trembling, approaches her sister in love, not judgment, and lays this upon her and asks her, how goes it with your soul? She will lead her to the Lord Jesus and pray for her healing, that she might declare the praises of God in Jesus' name. You with me, Corey? Amen. We pray this in Jesus' name. We will not be afraid. We pray for Lisa. We know you're a God of miracles. We know you move suddenly. We will not stop praying until this woman is touching the hem of your garment. And we thank you and praise you. Devil, get away. Step away from her. In the name of Jesus, we claim her for the kingdom of God. Lisa, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. In Jesus' name. Also, I was handed a picture. I'm just taking care of God's business right now. Is that all right? It's hand me a picture. Sandy. Is Sandy here? Sandy. She's not here? But you, her husband, is. Uh, their boy is stuck down in Mexico. He looks like a Marine. Is that right? He just got out, but he's in Mexico in, in, in a Mexican hospital, sick, and we need a healing on him and get him back here to the States as soon as possible. His name is Matthew. Put your hand on that. I want to give that back to you. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for Matthew for his healing, Lord, and for his soul. I pray the protection for him in that foreign country right now, I pray, and that those doctors will do what's right and make him well because of your hand and your power, Lord, and that he might come home safely. Be with Sandy as she is overwhelmed with this, that something good. You work all things together for the good of those that love you, called according to your purpose in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I'm sure others have situations as well, and we concern for you as well. These two came to my attention. And uh, for me to say we'll pray some other time is not appropriate for a pastor of the living God. So we did it together as a family. It's powerful. It's effective. It gives us hope. It, it gives us increased faith as we do things like this together. Yeah, I took a little bit of my preaching time, but God will make it up. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. Amen and amen. All right. You're amazing, brother. Anytime you want to come up. No, seriously, you want to come up and just jam with uh, Ronnie, come on up. Bring that wife of yours because you'll be running things anyway. Isaiah 48.3. Isaiah 48.3. It's a powerful spring, what they call a springboard verse. It gets us into the subject. Amen. Go ahead, Kyle. 
I have declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth, and I showed them. I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. That's going to be our key word for today, the word suddenly. Say suddenly. So when you see this slide, that's your response. Let's look at that same verse again, Kyle, out of the NLT, please, Rhonda. Go ahead, Kyle. Long ago I told you what was going to happen. Then suddenly I took action, and all my predictions came true. Here God is telling us he moves with suddenlies. He moves in suddenlies. Now, I need to tell you something. We have a God of suddenlies. That's, what he, that's how he moves and acts. It says here, that long ago, he laid down his foundation of his word, his promise. It's his predictions, they call it. Uh, prophetic words that came forth. And over the course of time, at the right time, God Almighty took action. And suddenly, they came to pass. And God is ready to take action in your life with the things you are struggling with. And suddenly, these will come to you in Jesus' name. We have a God of suddenlies. Now, what does suddenly mean? I wrote down some, some words here. Suddenly means instantly, unexpectedly, without warning, unforeseen, immediately. Have you ever heard someone say, boy, I didn't see that one coming? That's the way it is with God when he moves on you. Boy, I didn't see that coming. And you won't see it coming. <coughs> God will not let you know that in four and a half minutes, I'm going to heal you. No, he'll just do it. It'll just happen. I've had many people come up to me and say, Pastor, Pastor, I, it works. Prayer works. I said, well, what happened? So I've been praying for my arm, my shoulder. I couldn't raise it this high. But this morning, it went all the way up. It was a suddenly. Suddenly they could move it. Suddenly it didn't hurt. Suddenly the bills were paid. Suddenly. Unexpectedly. And no, without warning. God doesn't warn you when he moves. He just moves in power and his might. Often we have sat in the, uh, uh, the waiting room of God, waiting for something to happen, when all of a sudden, suddenly it happens. Uh, Loopy, you've been in a waiting room, and doctors are never on time, or dentists are never on time, and you're waiting, and you're waiting. But suddenly you hear your name, and you're in. Well, you're in the inner room, so you can wait some more. Thanks, Loopy. Suddenly there's provision. Suddenly there's healing. Suddenly there's a miracle. Suddenly his presence comes. Suddenly fire falls. That's the way he operates. That's the way he moves. Many of you have experienced that. Suddenly it turns for the better. Well, that's God. Hallelujah. Now, let me, let, let me say this. Let me say this. When, the, when there's a miracle in the Bible, it's always a suddenly. And when there's a suddenly, there's always a miracle attached to it. They're, they walk together. They're like twins. When there's a suddenly, a miracle. When there's a miracle, it's suddenly. Amen. And you can say, well, we should expect a miracle. Yeah, but you don't know when because it's going to be a suddenly. You know it's going to happen because you're claiming the promise, but that doesn't tell you exactly when it's going to come. It will, be, it will come to pass, but it's going to be on God's terms, God's way, for his greatest glory and your best good. And it will be a suddenly. Amen. I mean, you shared with me how, how the, the, uh, you, you wanted to build a building, and, and these uh, city officials dragged their feet, and, and they don't know which way to go on it. But suddenly, they okay it. That's God giving you favor. Hallelujah. Suddenly. And God will speak to you suddenly, Kyle. It's suddenly when he speaks. He doesn't call you up and say, look, in about three and a half minutes, I'll be, when I get off the phone with Putin, I'm going to be talking to you. Because I'm straightening that guy out over there. All right? He doesn't work that way, does he? Look at this scripture, 
please, in Numbers 12.4. Numbers 12.4. Go ahead. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation, and they three came out. Okay. What's important is not what God is saying. What's important is, well, God. what God has said is always important. Excuse me. Forgive me, Lord. Mm -mm. Don't be doing that. Uh, but that's not what I want to teach on. What I want to show you is God spoke to Moses and Aaron suddenly, and he'll do the same to you. Here you're asking for wisdom, and you don't know what to do. Suddenly, the light bulb turns on, and you know what to do. Isn't that amazing? Because God operates. We need to understand this. It isn't God is ignoring you. It's going to be the right time for his greatest glory and your best interest. And it will be a suddenly. Amen. All right. Now let's look at this. Luke 2.13. Bible's full of suddenly. When I began to study this, it's all over the place. Wow. Luke 2.13, about the announcement of the birth of Christ. That was a sudden announcement. Go ahead. Luke 2.13 says, And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Well, let's go ahead. What does he say? What did the angel say? Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Yeah, that came, that message came as a suddenly. Right? Verse 13, Rhonda didn't say that. And suddenly, and what, saints? And suddenly there was a great multitude of angels making the announcement of the birth of Christ. Suddenly. It, it, look, the shepherds are just going about their night like any old night. They're cleaning up, and they're getting the cattle and the sheep squared away, and they're yawning, and they're getting tired when what? Suddenly, the, light, the sky lights up. The darkness goes away, and it's like daytime. And a multitude, 10,000 times 10,000 angels are there singing and praising uh, the birth of Christ. Oh, it's fabulous. Here's another one. Matthew 28, 2, out of the NLT, New Living Testament. New Living Testament. Um, Matthew 28, 2. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. So what's, what's this re in reference to? What suddenly is this? Opening of the, the resurrection tomb. of Christ was it said suddenly yeah suddenly the angel appeared suddenly rolled the stone away but Christ had already been resurrected it was a suddenly suddenly early Sunday morning wow and there's another suddenly I want to talk to you about right here it's found in Acts 2 2 the outpouring of the Holy Ghost at Pentecost did you know that was a suddenly? Oh, yeah. While, while those 120 were up in, the, uh, uh, up in the upper room praying and singing and hearing sermons by Peter and having a, a, a time uh, of praying, like Jesus told them, tarry here in Jerusalem until the power comes upon you, guess what happens? At just the right time, God orchestrates and sends an outpouring of his Holy Spirit. Go ahead. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And suddenly, they didn't know it was unexpected. It was instantly, without warning, unforeseen. And they were all, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, tongues of fire on them. Other places in the Bible, the Bible says, after they prayed, suddenly they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Suddenly things happen, saints. That's how God operates. That's how he moves. He moves in suddenlies. Hallelujah. Mark 13, 36. I've been preaching on this every Wednesday uh, for the last several Wednesday nights about the rapture. The rapture will be a suddenly. There's no pre-warning. It's going to be unexpected. When someone tells you this is when the rapture is going to be next month on the third or something uh be ready sell everything you have and by the way give the money to me so i can you know meet the needs of other people uh, they do that by the way they do that no man knows the hour or time 
of his coming. No man. No angel. Right? Only the Father in heaven. Go ahead, read this. and uh, Read 35 first. Watch ye therefore, be, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. Yeah, I've been preaching, I've been teaching on this. It's been great. You need to come on Wednesday, I'm telling you. And because many people are interested, they're confused about the rapture and the second coming. There's two different events. One, one is we meet Jesus in the air. Uh, the second coming, the actual second coming is we come with him to earth and rule and reign with him for a thousand years and then the judgment and this and that, all kinds of things are happening. But we're safe and secure with Jesus. So I've been talking about the rapture being caught up in the air, the church, the believers. And many, did you hear a trumpet? Well, Kyle's still here, so we're okay. But the Bible does say two will be working in a field. Two will be in a church. One will be taken and one will remain. I'll be talking about that this Wednesday. Thank you. Because it's going to happen suddenly, like a thief in the night. A thief doesn't call you up and say, look, I'm going to be robbing you in about 45 minutes. I'm running late. No. You don't know when he's going to come. He just, a thief just comes unexpectedly. Now, the Bible says he'll be like a thief of the night. It's not talking Jesus is a thief. It's saying like. Like. That's how quick it's going to happen. That's how quick it's going to happen. It's going to be unexpected when you don't think it's going to happen. You think it's going to happen in church when you're on your knees and praying like this. Oh, God, I doubt it. It's going to be without warning. You're going to be unaware. And if you love the Lord, if you trust in God, one second you'll be here doing what you're doing. I don't know. You might be washing dishes. I don't know. Or you might be signing a contract for a million dollars. I don't know. And the next second, you're looking at Jesus and saying, can I just get the money first for that? Can I just finish? I was only halfway through my name. No, you won't. You'll be saying, hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Look at this scripture. You're going to love it. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be What's changed. What's this talking about? The rapture. The rapture. Those that are, uh, have, have died in Christ, those that are, uh, uh, love the Lord, love God, uh, they will be raised first. Right? And then after them, those that remain will be translated changed glorified bodies and you're going to love your glorified body you're going to be hot sitatsi again what's what's sagging now ain't going to sag anymore i'm talking to the men i'm talking to the men i'm talking to the men right brother i'm talking to the men don't get that don't even try that that's fake news you're going to take out there. I'm in trouble, aren't I? <laughs> but you love me. Amen and amen. Yeah, suddenly they took their pastor out and stoned him. <laughs> Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> Oh, Lord. The thing I want you to look at is it says in a moment or suddenly, in a twinkling of an eye. That's a sudden, ha that's a very sudden happening. A twinkling of an eye, I talked about this last week on Wednesday. Uh, for If you're a geek and a computer junkie, it's a nanosecond. A twinkling of an eye is the time it takes for light to get from the back of the eye to the front of the eye. That's a twinkling of an eye. It's so fast, it's unbelievable. You know how fast it is? I'm glad you asked. It's one, 
It's one one billionth of a second. What? One one billionth of a second. It's faster than a blink. Blink your eyes. Now you're looking at this wonderful specimen of a man right here. Right? Right? Blink your eyes. Now you're looking at the Lord. Not me. You're looking at the Lord. Seriously. You're, at, you're doing something. You're looking at your wife or something. And, and boom, you're seeing the Lord. It's going to happen that fast, brother. Well, there's none of this. Well, we'll be floating up. There's none of that stuff. There's a twinkling of an eye. You're going to be in his presence forever. Come on, somebody. And it's going to happen She had a suddenly. Suddenly, she dropped something on the floor. She bent down. I look up. She's not there. I'm pointing to the screen, and then she lifts up and waves at me. Now, that was a suddenly. It's okay. <laughs> God arranged that. Yeah. In a twinkling of an eye, saints, that's how fast it's going to be. And there's so much more I want to talk to you about. Because people say, well, every eye is going to see. Not the rapture. That's his second coming. The rapture is a secret catching away. I'll show you. When he returns with all the saints, every eye will see him. But the rapture, that's beyond the clouds. We're caught up beyond the clouds. And it's that fast. People, it's not going to be like the movies where people are, that are sitting on benches in parks that aren't safe see people start floating up in the air. That's not it. It's gone. They're gone. You're sitting at the counter talking to your wife about the Lord because she's not saved, and you're gone, and your Bible is there. And she's weeping, saying he was right. He was right. That's why it's so important to get your family into the kingdom. You don't know what's going to happen. Well, there's certain things in the Middle East. That, oh, I'm thank you for that, Mr. Scholar. Thank you for that. I know that. But that's for the second coming of Christ. Certain things have to take place, and they have not yet. Not about the rapture. He says it'll be like a thief in the night. It's going to be no man knows the hour or time. There's no sign that... There's no signs that you'll see that says, yes, the rapture is coming now. No! It's suddenly. So be ready. That's why Jesus said, be ready, lest he find you sleeping, not doing his will, not living for him. That's why you got to get right with God. You know, I'm done. I'm done with trying to uh, uh, analyze everything and whip cream it and give you a donut, have coffee bars out there. I'm done with that stuff. I'm just coming out and telling you, if you're not right with God, get right with God. Receive Christ. It'll be the best thing ever happened to you in your life. And then I'm going to tell him, he who has Christ has life. He who does not have, to have Christ does not have life. That's out of the Bible. But we're afraid to say anything because it's not correct. Yes, yeah, correct. It's B.C., biblically correct. I don't know getting too old. Love you, Rhonda. Oh. I want to tell you something right now. I'm going to run out of time like I did this morning. I, I, I was real. Uh, uh, Kyle, you weren't here. and Angie, Pastor Angie wasn't here, but Pastor Don was. And I became, because I began to talk about uh, the terrible things that are happening uh, uh, around the world, that another attack in London, with so many 
20, 30, 40 dead uh, by Islamic radical, I'll say it, I'll say it, radical Islamic terrorists. There you go. It is radical. It is terrorism. And it's wrong. Anyway, so uh, I began to talk about it. It became very emotional because little children, I call them children, 14, 15 years old. To me, they were kids. Daddy drops them off for a concert, and they're dead when they come out. The place blows up. Many died. Can you imagine sending your little sending your little boy or girl, 15, 14, 15, 16, all excited, begged you for tickets? Then you find out they're dead because of a stupid, false religion. Yeah, I said it. Go ahead. I was very upset about it. I couldn't preach anymore. Prayed. But stuff like that has happened here in discos and San Bernardino and all that, and the devil's working hard to strike fear in people. And, but we're not to be afraid, we're to trust in God. And I don't know why that happened with a sovereign. I'll leave that to you people that know everything. You all know everything, don't you? You don't? I don't. Well, wait a minute. I do know one person that knows everything. He's omniscient, and it's not you, it's not me, or the pastor down the street. His name is Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. All I can do is trust in him, keep preaching with my very last breath, and trust God. Suddenly's will come. I pray for the families in this church. Yes, and I'm praying for your suddenly's, that your children will come, your husband will come into the kingdom suddenly. That you never think it's going to happen. Remember suddenly, unexpected? But yet you'll get the phone call, and there's your little girl, 29 years old, saying, I, I accepted Jesus. I'm so sorry, Mama, I'm coming home. Suddenly, that's going to happen. Suddenly, God will bring it about. Suddenly, whatever you're dealing with in your life, God's going to remove it. You're going to have breakthrough. Needs will be met. Families restored. It's going to happen, and it's going to happen suddenly. You're not going to see it changing. You're not. This ain't changing. Uncle Fred, he's still getting drunk. Ever, and nothing seems to be changing. It's going to happen suddenly. Uncle Fred's going to drop to his knees and receive Jesus Christ as his Savior and Lord. Let me give you an example of this in the Bible. I'm going to run out of time. An example of this in the Bible. Oh, and I got a story I want to tell you. Oh, which one? Which? All right. No, I'm going I'm I'm to give you this. I'm going to give you this. Right off, uh, uh, anybody familiar with Caleb? They had this story on their, uh, uh, on their site. I made copies between services. Your pastor's booking it, running, getting stuff ready for you. A little messenger of God here. I got my postman blue suit on because I'm delivering the mail. Delivering the mail. I'm going to paraphrase, but guess what? We have copies. You see, uh, um, you see our lovely lady in the back there. I know it's Beth. I'm talking about another lovely lady, Terry. See either one of them back there, and they have this printed out. I got it right from there. And Caleb, they're legit. And... Uh, Anyway, just to sum summarize it, a, a pastor who's been uh, watched by terrorists, Islamic uh, uh, jihadists, uh, because they don't like the Christian stuff. When you start converting people in their cities, in their controlled towns, uh, the beheading starts, right? And uh, anyway, this pastor is baptizing 
new believers in a new in a nearby river. They tried to keep it a secret, but they were found out. And these militants came in to kill them. Apprehended the pastor and the few people that were there, and those getting baptized, and they were going to kill them, mutilate them. When all of a sudden, a lion jumped out of the bushes. Go read it. And and jumped on one of the terrorists by the neck. And when the other and when the other militants tried to kick him off and hit him, more lions jumped out of the bushes. It was a suddenly, even even the script said, suddenly a lion jumped forth upon one of them. And then suddenly more lions came forth and the enemy fled. You know, that's the Lion of Judah, you know. You don't mess with. Now, who's a scholar? Who's, who's a scholar in here knows? You know the Old Testament pretty well. You recall a story in the Old Testament about, I'm not quite sure if it was Elijah or Elisha. But he was going along, and some teenagers began to uh, uh, bully him. God sent bears out and mauled those teenagers. You recall that in the Old Testament? It's there. It's there. So here comes these lions. Can I get an amen here? I mean, and God will do the same for you when people start coming against you. Lions will come out against them in Jesus' mighty name. And it will be a suddenly, a suddenly, they were praying. The, the article says they were praying as they were being apprehended and, and put, going to be put to death right on the spot. Two weeks earlier, this pastor had been stoned for preaching the gospel and left for dead. And, and the Christians picked him up, uh, ran and hid, and then afterwards picked him up and got him to a hospital, and he lived by the grace of God. And here two weeks later, all beat up, he, Kyle, he's baptizing new believers. Well, God had enough. Send the lions in. Send the lions in. Do you see God intervening in that? Do you see suddenlies here? I do. And I have 50 copies if you'd like to take one. We, we'll make more. Right, girls? Yeah, we'll make more if need be. Because I want you to take it and show it to your friends and neighbors. See, God is on the move. God operates in suddenlies. Hallelujah. Do I have time? Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Kings 18. Let's do a quick, just this last one. I'm about halfway through. 1 Kings 18, 38 and 39. I still want to pray for London. Can somebody remember to play? Let's do it now. Forget it, Kyle. Let's do it now. We want to pray for London. Don't you think we should? They've been hit three times. They're our friend and ally. Our president has already sent word, we'll do anything you need. He wants to send troops. And the prime minister, what May, Prime Minister May, had enough. He said, put a containment on this, and we're going to start replacing the leaders in our... It's ridiculous. I want to pray. That's righteous anger, honey. I'm not sinning by being upset. I'm upset because innocent women and children are being killed. Christians are being beheaded with their heads hang up as a mockery and a joke. I don't like it. So we need to pray. We need to pray big time and help any way we can. Any kind of support. Father, we give you the praise and the glory, Lord. We thank you that your spirit is with us and guiding us. 
we welcome you, Holy Spirit, as this is the day of Pentecost. We remember this is when you were poured out. Lord, as we see terror around this world, we know it is not from you, but it is the one who likes to strike fear. You are not a God of fear, but you give us faith. And Lord, just as that pastor, after being beaten, is baptizing in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that we will stand with confidence on your word, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord, for our friends in London right now, who proclaim the gospel, I thank you, Lord, that you will give them boldness by your spirit to continue to carry that gospel forth, Lord. But the only way to deliver this is through the truth of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that your hedge will be about our brothers and sisters in Christ in London and throughout all of Europe. And Lord, I also lift up my friends and brothers that are in the Philippines right now. For, Lord, they are beheading, they are declaring martial law because they are trying to get a hold of this terrorist act that is going on. And I thank you, Lord, that you are protecting and keeping your children. You are commanding your angels to guard about them and forming a hedge about them. That the world will see that we are different because we are marked with the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ, and your spirit is in us. And, Lord, we pray that your spirit will come and give us boldness to continue carrying forth your gospel and to bring deliverance and salvation to this dying world through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for bringing wisdom to our leaders, discernment and understanding, Lord, that they will be, have an ear that is open to your voice and they will follow your leading. For you have placed them in their position for your purpose and for your glory. We give you the praise and we thank you for this, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. And may God bless America. I'm not ashamed of that either. Praise God. Keep praying for our country and our leaders. They're under tremendous attack. and and uh, But freedom will prevail. And uh, our God will prevail. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You might be here uh, this morning and you need a breakthrough. You need it suddenly. Um, God is able. He's willing. You might, well, not, I don't see anything happening. It's the same thing every day, every day. Okay. Are you ready for your suddenly? You ready for it to happen? We're going to pray for that to happen. For you. Absolutely. That better job, that that home you want to purchase, but doors keep slamming. You're gonna get a suddenly. You're gonna get a you're gonna get a call and say, Yeah, we can do this. It's a suddenly. That pain you just won't go away in your back. It's time for a suddenly or your foot. Or those migraine headaches that just keep coming and coming and coming. You keep praying, praying, and praying. Well, it's time. Come on, we're going to pray again. I pray for a suddenly for you, for every one of you. A suddenly for the young people. Suddenly, their hearts won't ache anymore. Suddenly, they won't be verbally abused by their parents. Suddenly, suddenly, good things will happen. Yeah, suddenly. Suddenly, families would be repaired and reconciled, restored. Suddenly, you'll get that victory in that area that has you taken. Suddenly, in Jesus' name. Yeah, I believe in suddenlies. I think you should too. I have much more I want to tell you about that, and I'll do it next week. First, I want you to stand, please, in the presence of Almighty God. And there, if there's somebody here, including the teenagers, the young people, the seniors, everyone in between. If there's somebody here and you want to change, guess what? Jesus can change you suddenly. 
suddenly he'll touch you. Suddenly you'll change. Suddenly your mind will become whole. Suddenly that broken heart will be mended and made whole. Suddenly. Suddenly. Your kids will call and say, forgive us. Suddenly. If you need a suddenly, I, just want, you, I want you to raise your hand. Just raise your hand if you're in that situation where you need a suddenly. You need something to happen. You, you don't see it, but that's okay. That's the way it always is with God. Remember, unaware, unexpected, didn't see that coming. You won't, but it'll come. The healing will come suddenly. The deliverance suddenly. The provision suddenly. All in Jesus' mighty name for his glory and your best interest and good. Suddenly, I'm telling you. Suddenly. If you need to open your heart to Christ, he will suddenly come in if you open your heart. Yes, he will. He'll suddenly come into you and sup with you and fellowship with you and change you. You'll never be the same. Suddenly. Lord, I pray for those raising their hands right now. Lord, suddenlies, miracles, breakthrough is what we're praying for and asking. An outpouring of your suddenlies, an outpouring of your spirit, an outpouring of your love and grace, an outpouring, I pray, suddenly fill us with your spirit. Suddenly change us into the image of your dear son. Suddenly remove the pain. Suddenly mend the heart. Suddenly, I pray, provide the finances. Provide, bringing the provision, I pray. Suddenly. Suddenly. If there's somebody here that wants a suddenly of a life change forever and you need to open your heart, you're, you're finally ready and not reluctant anymore to say yes to Jesus and accept him as Savior and Lord, I want you to raise your hand and wave it at me. you got to wave it back and forth because there's other people. There's other people raising their hands for a breakthrough. Just wave it back and forth. I see one. I see two anybody else it's time don't be stubborn no more open your heart to the king of kings and lord of lords i pray now let's pray together father in heaven thank you for your son jesus christ forgive me my sins cleanse me i pray bring us suddenly to me salvation I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in my heart, God raised him from the dead. Suddenly, now I know I'm saved. Suddenly, now I'm a child of God. Suddenly. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Somebody clap right now. Come on. Let's get a sudden thunder of clapping for Jesus. Praise God. Part two next week. <laughs> it's going to be great.